the issue of open access is something which we learned recently over the last 10, 15 years how important this is. And for certain disciplines, let's call about mathematics for example, where they have to spend for their publications sometimes 50% of their research money. This is of course an enormous burden. And I think where we have not yet started really to understand the benefits of open access is in fact in the humanities. Here I think we have a long way still to go, but we have to start today if we want to be there in a couple of years. What will the future be of the availability of uh, data and articles? In another world, which is also a silent revolution, we have this kind of orchid subjects. Um, science on Japan, science on Indonesia, things like that. Universities have not just one or maximum two professors. And these are huge areas. And they have been working somehow in isolation. Now, if they put all their data in, digital, in, 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 in digitized form... In the cloud. In the cloud. They have within seconds a virtual faculty where they can speak together immediately. And this has changed the attitude in humanities and is still rapidly changing. Now if you go back to the 16th, 17th century, you wouldn't have the discussion because in some sense uh, science was open access and people were yeah, traveling true. and universities were places where students from the whole continent would come. Mm. So we are almost like reinventing our past uh, with modern technology. What can we do better in explaining open access? We need here, I guess, some kind of direction of the future. And uh, how are we in this world going to work together? And I think Europe is in a unique position to show how this can be done in practice. The digital world is in some sense a much more fluid place to come together. And I think here the world is looking for some kind of leadership and I hope that Europe will take that. One of the things that's very characteristic of my own field at the moment, cancer research, is that new findings make their way into the clinic extremely rapidly. And that will only happen effectively uh, if doctors and nurses and other healthcare workers and patient advocates know about these results. And we feel very strongly, I think most of my colleagues agree, that the more available our data and information can be, the better off our society will be. By nature, uh, science is a public enterprise. It's something that we do for the public good. We use the public resources, we use the public talent. We can only be uh, supporting that effort if people are uh, aware of what we are doing. So I feel that it's, uh, from the point of view of a working scientist, it's my duty to communicate to as many people as possible what I'm doing, what my big questions are, what motivates me, and uh, how I can actually help society. And should public policy influence this? We, as members of the government, um, are paying many grantees to do research with large amounts of money. And we have a public responsibility to ensure that, uh, that scientists have the best opportunity to make use of that data and that the public has a chance to see it. Research that is of interest to the public and supported by taxpayers ought to be accessible. How can I explain to the taxpayer, so to say, the European citizens in the street, why we are spending the money, how we are spending the money, and what is in for them? And there is a good story. What would you explain to the European taxpayer? I believe that intellectual ownership is as important as material ownership. Um, and therefore we have to protect this intellectual ownership, but at the same time allow access for the researchers to get rapid access to what they need. My primary goal is that societies become learning societies with the help of us and with the help of internet and all those. We need all tools. It's no longer the big professor who gives a talk and then hopes that everybody understands. We need all means in order to get across what science can do and how science is enabling an interesting future. In the future, everything we do should be towards a more open approach 
to the scientific endeavors. And uh, so I hope in five years we have, uh, first of all, I think we have some consensus that this is the way to go forward, that we have uh, practically uh, a many business models in the scientific publishing that are open access, that we have much more open uh, sources, both of data and, and, and software. I don't think we want to build one big library or something. That's we did say uh, many, many years ago in Alexandria. Say, uh, now we want to do this in the digital world. Confronting the huge data that are there in, in the humanities and in the social sciences, I think that could be really a, a flagship project for Europe. To make open access journals good, widely endorsed, and I believe that the European Union is helping here dramatically by making a public statement that we think this is the right thing to do. That helps the whole movement and brings science into an area that I think most scientists want to be, want it to be, namely supportive of open access distribution of, of uh, learning.